Hello, everyone. I'm William, a Senior Solutions Engineer of HashCorp. Uh, I'm based in Singapore, and welcome to this snapshot session. Uh, in an area of where securing data, uh, digital asset in a paramount, that our HashCorp vault emerges as a tool for managed secrets and protecting the sensitive data. So the introduction of the SAML uh, authentication is further amplified vaults uh, capabilities. So this session is aimed to uh, unfold our new SAML authentication features, uh, give you some details. You will learn how the vault, uh, SAML authentication uh, works, how it facilitates a robust single sound solutions, uh, thereby simplify the user authentication process while support, supporting the security, enhance access controls, uh, reducing the identity management overhead. Right. So through the presentation, and also I give you a live demo, uh, we'll show you the straightforward uh, the process of configuring SAML authentication in Vault, and also showing case of benefits of Vault SAML authentication in supporting a very secure, efficient, and compliant operation landscape. Okay. So next step. So in HashCorps, we actually in, when I talk about our uh, multi-cloud zero trust uh, securities. We actually have four pillows, which is the machine also authorization and authentication, which is covered by our product. And the topic today, the vault, and also machine to machine access, which is covered by our product console. Uh, and it's a, basically it's a service discovery and service mesh tool. Uh, boundary, human to machine access, uh, which is covered by our boundary tool. Uh, so the vault and plus boundary will be a pen solution, okay, for human to access machine remotely. Then also, of course, uh, everyone knows the Terraform uh, for the infrastructure as a code automation tool and platform and the packer for the to, to build the trust images, right? So vault itself, you can as you can see, vault itself actually support a lot of a lot of authentication method. Right, so similar to SAML, actually, we are actually uh, also support the OIDC authentications. So while SAML use XML for its security tokens, the OIDC actually use the JSON web token, uh, JWT token to, uh, for authentication, right? So OIDC is often seen as a simpler solution for identity uh, federations, particular when extending access to clients or uh, partners because it's simplicities and ease of integrations. While SAMO, uh, which introduced in our vault 1.15 later, uh, is more complex and more often used in scenarios where big enterprise enterprises are doing need who need deep control over the authentication process is needed, such as corporation identity federations. Right. So what is SAMO 2.0? Sample 2.0 is uh, is still stand for the security assertion markup language. It's an open standard created to provide the cross domain single sign on, right? While sample has been used since 2005, uh, so it remains very popular in identity federations between the business to business, right? So it has been widely adopted. Generally, it's because uh, it provides seamlessly side on between business and enterprise. Uh, you will need to uh, handle SAML, right? So in fact, SAML 2.0 is a mainly is a is a mainly used for enterprise and government applications, right? So how SAML works? SAML use XML to pre represent users' identity data and the simple HTTP for data transport uh, mechanisms. SAML is using the uh, well. SAML is using XML-based authentication protocols, which the I the we call identity provider IDP. Uh, IDP is here. Uh, right, IDP here entitles match and store you the credentials. Uh, just like your Okta directories, your Active directories, your Azure ADs, right? So exchange is those to exchange digital signed uh, XML documents. We call SAML assertion, right? SAML assertion allowing an uh, end to uh, end user to access a service provider, right? Service provider, such as uh, a collection of applications. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> uh, the service provider request and reverse uh, re receiving data from the identity provider is known as uh, the 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 relaying party, right? So uh, it will uh, the user uh, 
it will encapsulate in the sample assertion and in the form of attributes such as email address, name, phone, right? So in a real world, it's just like you are uh, a, a traveler, uh, everybody going to holiday uh, in near future, right? It's in Christmas season. So it's thinking about traveler which to come to Singapore for short vacation. When they arrive at the border, they are asked for their passport. So in order to authenticate them, to authorize their access, so the traveler need to uh, provide the passport. But if the passport, uh, traveler don't have the passport, what they do, they need to they will direct it to the home country's government to get one, right? So once a traveler get the passport, they will provide uh, prov proof of the identity to the officer at the border. So the checker, so they will check if the passport is valid and identity data on it and decide whether the traveler is coming in or not. So in this scenario, the traveler of the home country is identity provider. Uh, so the, the officer at the border is representing Singapore government are relaying party. So Singapore is a, as a country is a service provider and the passport itself, a uh, passport itself is, is just thermal assertion, right? So it's just like simple as like that, okay? So one go one step further into the sample alternative flows. As you can see, when a user a uh, step one went to access a, a resource as uh, some service like sp.example.com, right? So he will access use the browser to access the data. So because the service provider uh, say, hey, you I want to I, I need you to supply your uh, security information, right? So the SP will then send the HTTP redirect response, redirect response to the to the browser. Uh, it normally is HTTP 302 or 303, right? The location HTTP header contains the destination URL, which point to the identity provider, right? So the, the browser will redirect, then redirect the response to the identity provider. I issue a HTTP GET request uh, to the IDP single sound service. Oh, okay. So uh, it get a GET request, right? So the in this case, the single sound service will determine a user has an existing logout session or not. Uh, uh, if not, it will ask the user to do authentication. In this case, user will or input user name and password, right? So after user provide the valid user name and password, uh, maybe it's here, uh, the identity provider could also provide something like uh, <clears throat> multi fact authentications, like uh, authenticators, uh, SMS logins, email uh, OTPs, something like that, right? So after that, the uh, IDP will bundle a sample assertion, represent users' local security context, okay? Uh, it will then be uh, signed, uh, be digital signed, and send, uh, provide uh, with a sample response message uh, back to the browser, right? So the browser will then post the, the data uh, to the service providers, okay? You know, in this case, uh, access check is made to establish whether the user has correct authorizations to access the resource, okay? If the access is check is passed, uh, so the resource is then returned to the browser successfully, right? Okay, so come uh, come back to the vault, uh, our hash code vault itself. So in uh, in the uh, version one point one five, we add those features to support the SAML uh, authentications, right? Uh, for the to to compl uh, for to fulfill this requirement, big long request um, because. Many big enterprise customers they are requesting the sample authentications instead of OIDC, right? So uh, sample authentication plugin itself also has a full HTTP API, which you can use to for coding as well as for automations, right? So let's take a look at how you can enable it. Okay, it's just as simple as you can write the command, the so called vault authentication enable SAML, right? So in this case, you will enable uh, SAML authentication at the mount, uh, default mount pass is SAML, right? Of course, you can you also use the web UI to select to, uh, uh, to, to enable the SAML authentication method, right? So after that, uh, after that, you will need to do some configuration, a little bit configurations, right? So. Uh, the ACE, the one mark in yellow, the ACE, uh, the ACS URLs is the parameter where the SAML response will send after the user authenticate uh, with the identity provider uh, in the browser. So the, to support 
think about the scenario, you might have multiple vault clusters for and the enterprise could have multiple vault cluster for uh, DR or, or other purpose, right? So we do support multiple URLs uh, for in this one, okay? So we have primary, a primary cluster and secondary clusters, right? Also, if we also support namespace, right? So in the assertion consumer service URL, uh, you can uh, involve an identity providers will configure will configure the namespace, uh, the something sample namespace, which is the admin or or securities. Okay, so this namespace. So after that, <clears throat> uh, some of the doing after or. Uh, some of the configuration will also put something for authorizations, right? The, so uh, once the user has authorized uh, authenticate, the authorized will flow. Uh, flow will validate that by the uh, both bound uh, bound subjects and bound attributes. Uh, okay, what that's used for is to uh, to match expect values configured for the role. So this can be used to restrict access to vault for a subset of users instead of big groups of everyone right so for example here is uh is the with the boundary subjects with example.com and attribute as support uh, and the engineering right so in this case in this case the it will allow only the authorized user uh, authorized user to subject has a example.com suffix and either in the uh, support group or engineering groups uh, engineering groups okay so it's so and also here the, the globe the globe here we have uh, uh, different uh, attributes mm. a match tab match tab uh, for uh, for the matching right so this one is if it's a globe it means can match everything if a direct direct match you you can use string okay can use string to to exactly match okay Okay, then the next one will be the when you're logging, uh, you can actually using the uh, CLI to login, vault login methods equal sample role, which is the one we define uh, for the user to login. You can also in the URL later in the demo, you will see uh, is sign in to vault. Uh, you use that to sign in to vault. You can select sample, then put the role here, uh, which is a role here. Then after you click the sign in sample, it will directly redirect to the uh, IDP, right? So let's go ahead to the demo itself. So here the demo is, the, the demo scenario is vault, the vault administrator for a fitness APP startup who needs to onboard a developer team, a aqua team uh, to vault so that the team can access relevant project secrets. Vault is used to store several Aqua team secrets. For example, one such secret is API token for dashboard service. So Dan is a member of Aqua team and needs access to the API token, let's say for uh, five weeks, right? So Dan does not have uh, direct access to Vault authentication methods, but Dan does have uh, identity in the company's uh, directory, which is Okta in this sample. Right, Alice, uh, so the admin can enable the SAMO or synergy method in, in the vault, then define a role uh, to, uh, to and the policy which allow Dan and other users to authenticate uh, in this IDP, right? So Dan then can be enabled uh, to login uh, to the, with the SAMO authentications uh, to the vault, then he can be able to retrieve the secret API secret tokens. Right, so this is a background of this uh, demo. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead to the demo itself. Okay, here is the uh, uh, voice of, uh, it's a web URL, right? So we are here, right? Let me just open that. Okay, so here when we uh, all have the vault URL, you can see actually see multiple login method. You can select Okta, you can select SAMO, you can select tokens. Okay, here in this demo, we are using the SAMO authentications and we put the uh, role is project Aqua developers, uh, which is to uh, re is represent the, the group of users in the Aqua team, right? So here you will be redirect to the Okta directories, okay? I will redirect to the Okta directories and user is uh, then, uh, when you're logging with the user, then 
and input the password. Here, in this case, you can use either use either username password, or you can also enable the multi-fact authentications for the authentication, right, in the IDP. So when it come back to the USC, it's logging already. Uh, it, the set login session has uh, 840 hours login sessions, right? So if you click the secrets, let me increase the site site bigger to, so that you can see, okay? If you key the secret engines, you can see the secrets, okay? In the secrets, you can see your Aqua team dashboard, your secrets here, all right? So and you can click the C to see your API tokens, right? So of course, if you have uh, all the codings, APIs, uh, you can call uh, directly through the programmings, right? Okay, so this is demos as uh, how the uh, user then to access the secrets. Then people might ask, right? People might ask uh, if there's another user which does not to the does not belong to the group, right? What will the what will happen? So let's take a look. So let's say if uh, uh, let me quit this uh, browser to to clear up all this uh, logon cache. Okay, then open another browser. Okay, so so in this case there's another user called Brian. Okay, Brian also want to uh, log in the. The, this uh, vault server to for with SAML authentications, but he is not belong to the Aqua team. He actually belong to another group called uh, Beta team, right? So in this case, if I send in this uh, user, right? So now in this case, I'm not logging with uh, Dan. I log in with uh, Brian, right? And if I log in here, it's because the it will say the authentication is not authorized, right? Because uh, this authentication is purely for Aqua team members, purely for Aqua team members, right? So how do I resolve this? How do I resolve this? I will then to go to my. Uh, Bot server to create a group of uh, policies for for the uh, let's see uh, for beta team uh, for the policies for uh, Brian to access the resource his team's resource right uh, which is the secrets beta team dashboard the API resource and also I create a new role uh, for the beta team. Ah, so in, in case here, you can see my uh, uh, bound attribute here is bound to the beta team, right? So in this case, uh, the Brian is ready to log in with his own uh, the, the roles, right? So here, well, if you want to, if you log in and uh, you use the project beta developers, uh, use the project beta develop, beta develop, uh, this here role is different, not uh, core. If you click sign in, and you use the Brian to log in. I use Brian to log in. In this case, you will be able to log in uh, with Brian, right? Uh, with Brian, and uh, you can see Brian is logging and click here. Uh, you can see the Brian's, you can, Brian can access the beta team's resource without any issue. So if you want to click any uh, Aqua team resource, you will, you will get error because he does not have a permission, right? He does not have permission to access Aqua Teams based on ACL policies, okay? So in this case, I finished my demo.